Welcome to Hook and Look Splash, a splash of angling information with an underwater point of view. Let's take a look at this. I bet you we can see the perch and everything else down. <laughs> we get in the edge of those weeds. See Abram also all over the place, huh? You can see them in the grass and on the bottom. Yeah. But it's not a rock. See how the, gro the yep. zebra mussels yep. are growing on the grass? Yep, I see that. I didn't notice that when I pulled some of them. Look at the small mouth. Look at that small mouth. mouth. Holy cow. <laughs> That's crazy. That is awesome. You can <laughs> see one back there, too. There's a few of them. You know, looking in this camera is a, is a riot sometimes. Wow. I mean, it tells you a lot. It shows, shows you what that bottom's like in, in 20 foot of water, you know, basically. That's what we're looking at right now. They're just, just above the weed line there. Yep. So taking into consideration the abundance of zebra mussels that are resting along the bottom here, braided line tipped with fluorocarbon leader is definitely the way to go. However, in hindsight, Kim realized we could have used heavier line. Without question, after inspecting the target area with the AquaView camera, we quickly discovered that the bottom conditions were extremely demanding for any braided line. The short strands of weed growth along the edge were absolutely laden with zebra mussels. The tour-grade tungsten Carolina rig weight we brought into play was primarily designed to be used around rock and miscellaneous hard structure. However, in this environment, its shape made it inevitable to collect weeds. Like snagging strings of razor blades, the zebra mussel-laden vegetation would gradually bunch up on the line as the weight dragged along the bottom, thus making the presentation a little more challenging. Now, I'm not going to say we never cut off with Seaguar's new Smackdown braided line, because that's the point I'm getting at. We did on more than one occasion. However, in hindsight, under these extreme conditions, we should have utilized much heavier braided line teamed with bait casting equipment. And a bullet-shaped tungsten weight would have slipped through the weed growth more easily. Lesson learned for next time. To view additional Splash podcasts, simply visit hookandlook.com.